Good evening, YouTube. What is going on? Heir of Bretonia here, and I'm with Joan of Arc. I mean, Repents de Leones. Leones. Le okay, I can't say it like her. Seriously, though, no joke. I was playing her a little bit in campaign whenever we first got early access, and I thought she was saying Ponce de Leon. You'll see. When you get it, you'll see. Anyway, she's an awesome new character that's been added to the game. Very fun to play, and I get to show her to you in a multiplayer to battle tonight, which I'm very excited about, uh, because I think you all are going to enjoy this one. It's going to be a Bretonia versus Chaos matchup, and I am playing against none other than Indy Pride from Milk and Cookies Total War. I tell you all every time I play against him, if you haven't seen his channel, then you've been hiding under a Total War rock, and you should go check it out. Um, he's got a great channel on YouTube, and he makes great content for the game, heavily focused on multiplayer. A lot of times he'll look at mods, play some campaign from time to time too, so you should definitely go check it out. In any case, um, I got a fun army here. We're going to be trying out some of the uh, units that have uh, gotten a little bit of a, uh, a, a buff, I would say, I guess, kind of, coming into this one. Um, so there's a few units here that we'll call in. So anyway, Repents, what kind of character is she? Well, she deals anti-infantry damage, uh, but she deals a lot of armor piercing. Uh, she's heavily armored. She's basically a questing knight lord, and she's a good one at that. Uh, very capable unit, immune to psychology, very, very tough unit. Uh, she's being supported by the Beast Slayers of Baston, and then I've got the new um, hero that comes with her, this hero paladin, Henry Le Massif. And he has got some very nice anti-large armor-piercing capability as well. They are supported by a damsel of life on a unicorn. We had to have the unicorn. <laughs> so i got to bring a unicorn. But that's like an instant win if you bring a unicorn. By the way, pro tip, Warhammer. Bring a unicorn, you win. You know what else if you bring that you win? Peasants. These are some fresh, farm-grown peasants ready to be sacrificed to corn for the good of their lords. <laughs> Sorry, gents, you're in a bad place. Um, behind them, I've got some Minotarms, and then behind them, some Foot Squires. My Foot Squires are supported by some Questing Knights. Yes, Questing Knights, and we have a special unit of Questing Knights with us on the battlefield. That is the Companions of Kinel, and this unit has seen a change in the patch. They now have anti-large damage as well, making them an absolutely fantastic anti-large unit. i got a Knights of the Realm on this flank. One more Questing Knight. There are some Battle Pilgrims. And then some Spearmen at Arms with shields on the flanks. Why with shields? I was playing against Chaos. I don't know why I went for the shielded variant, but whatever. Um, so, Indy Pride playing as the Forces of Chaos. He brings, you know, who you should be bringing with Chaos, right? He has brought Archaon, the Dark Lord of the End Times, equipped with his Lore of Fire, his Slayer of Kings. He is going to be quite the beast to try and take on. And speaking of beast, he brought one. Archaon doesn't come with a dog to battle. He comes with a dragon ogre, Shagoth. And then he's got a couple more beasties. These are going to be the new and improved cost um, uh, <laughs> exalted hero. Well, I almost lost it there for a second. So these exalted hero on Manticore are now only 1100 in cost, I think, when you price them right. And then uh, the, if you put the mark of corn on them, of course, they get frenzy and makes them that much better still, and they are rocking the mark, uh, mark of corn right now. Now, as for his infantry, we've got some Chaos Marauders on the front line, and then Forsaken. Forsaken are a fantastic pick in the match against Bretonia. They absolutely mulch Bretonian infantry. Yes, they suffer badly to Bretonian cavalry, but like I said, infantry mulch. That's, that's what they do. Anyway, and then there's going to be a uh, unit of Chosen with Halberds here in the back. These guys are just amazing. They need some immune to psychology, but they're otherwise quite amazing. Let's go watch the battle, folks. See how this plays out. Um, we'll see whether or not I can represent Bretonia properly here. It's going to be a tough fight. Uh, as soon as the battle started and I saw his flying units, I was obviously concerned. Um, I've got a lot of targets to focus on. There are four large targets on the battlefield that will be difficult to kill, all of which can cause tremendous damage given a certain fight they're in. I am also supporting my infantry units with um, the uh, Grail Relic. I've got two of them because I want my infantry units to stay in the fight for stupid long times, and plus it gives my opponent four or five different things to kill as well, right? So when you bring more of those single entity models like that, it gives your opponent something that they probably need to focus on. The Beast Slayers, I put them in the middle so that nothing could come and try and punish my lords too easily, like a Kolek, or in this case a flying goon squad. I wanted to give them something to worry about. And then, of course, the peasants get to run out front, and here comes the sacrifice! Blood for the blood god. Corn for the corn flakes, and so on. <laughs> Look at 
this dude, he's got a shovel. He's got a freaking shovel. <laughs> dude's, dude's got a shovel and a hammer. Look what they're getting attacked by. I'm sorry, I'm dying. Oh, I love peasants. Anyway, here comes the companions of Canel after allowing their peasant brethren to be totally thrown in his fodder. Only then do they come in to try and give them a little defense and the battle starts to get underway. Oh man, that is just too good. We're going to see a piercing bolts of burning here from Arcane. This is a great place for it. I should have unblobbed um, because I'm about to take a real fire bath here. Now, the companions of Kinel do have some fire resistance, but there was still a lot of armor piercing damage there. You saw it. Multiple units dead very quickly. On the flank here, my Knights of the uh, Realm going to get overwhelmed. Even though they have some spear support here, they need to get out of this fight. It's not a fight that they want to be in. Not one that is going to uh, shake out their way. Now over here, we get a Grail Relic in. We can overwhelm the, the Mirror Guard over time, but it will take time. The Battle Pilgrims are going to get run up on by a bunch of infantry over here as well. I'm, I'm kind of holding my, uh, my Foot Squires as a reserve guard as needed. In the original fight, too, I was thinking that this was just a standard... Um, uh, Chaos Warrior with Halberd, so bad scouting on my part. This is a Chosen with Halberd. So my Beast Slayers are not in a fight that they really want to participate in, but I'm just using them to kind of hold that unit back. So my Questing Knights over here, up in the middle of this fight. The Dragon Ogre's not going to want to stay around the Questing Knights for long, but they do have the support of Archaean at the moment. Back here, my, my uh, Mage comes under attack, and then Archaean comes in too, and now I just don't have enough units to protect my, uh, my, uh, damsel, I should say. So my damsel is on the run, and she is in a very bad predicament right now. Look, there's gonna be another piercing bolts of burning arcane. Making use of that spell, it's a great spell. It's, uh, kind of an underused spell, too. People don't always count on it. It really causes a lot of damage, and it's good against armor. You can see it right there, what it did to the foot squire, so very well played by Archaon, and then he's gonna drop some, uh, I'm going to drop some healing in with uh, with my ma uh, damsel. Crap, I keep saying mage. I'm so used to high elves. I needed some healing here to come in because she's about to die. I, I just cannot keep her alive at this point. I'm running away, but she routed, and she's being chased by a manticore. Her leadership just couldn't hold together. I'm going to take another shot at uh, Kolek's cousin here, but he intelligently retreats straight through the Chosen with Halberds, and there is little I can do about that. I do send some Foot Squires over to see if I can start pulling these guys apart. I'm going to pull the Beast Slayers out of that fight and substitute this other infantry. I want to get the Beast Slayers out of there. Now, unfortunately for me, the uh, the Battle Pilgrims, they, they held out for a decent period of time, killed quite a few Marauders, but they're getting overwhelmed because the Spearmen at Arms could not hold their own against these Forsaken. And honestly, the Battle Pilgrims wouldn't either. They would still get mulched by Forsaken. They've just done a little bit better at holding out a little longer for me. I do have some cavalry left, but they've got a lot to focus on too. And this fight is quickly becoming very problematic for me. Now, because the um, Chosen with Halberds were here, I'm going to take my cavalry around the flanks. Indy sees what I'm doing right away and pounces on this unit before I'm in a great position to support. But I am going to whip around with the Companion of Canel and do my best to come in and support this. I've got Rapanz and Henry in here as well. And I'm going to come in and try and take out the Dragon Ogre and then see what we can do from there on out. So there's going to be Archaon using his Flaming Sword of Ruin here, causing some extra magical damage. We've got the Knights of the Realm. You can see the Companion of Canel get in here and just absolutely crap on the Shagoth. And then there's Archaon here. There's going to be two, <coughs> two Feral Manticores coming in. These guys are going to dish a lot of damage. But look at this. The Chosen with Halberds get free. And at this point, it is rest in pepperonis <laughs> for Rapun... Uh, I almost said Rapunzel for her pants. <laughs> She's not Rapunzel. She doesn't have the hair. Yeah, she just in over her head at this point. I've really got nothing else to support her with. We threw in... We threw all in here. And with those uh, Chosen with Halberds winning their fight and managing to get out, there's just really nothing that she can do. I throw back a few of the halberds with that that explosion thing there but it's there's just nothing she can do she's completely overmatched here henry le massif uh manages to do quite a bit of damage but you can see our Kaon came in really strong does take some damage in return i mean rapan's not exactly set up to kill our Kaon. um he's in a much better position i think to take her out 
and as the support wanes, there's little she can do. And the Knights of Bretonia, led by their new lord, are gonna fall victim to chaos. So you know what? It just means another war of errantry, folks. There's just gonna be there's gonna have to be another one. Go regroup. Go on a second war of errantry <laughs> against chaos. The Chevaliers de Leoness, um, definitely gonna have to uh, regroup and come back. Hey, she survived. She was running away in a very cowardly fashion there at the end. Nah, so it was a great battle. I think that um, I didn't answer the Forsake in the right way. And if you look at the kills those dudes picked up on the flanks, it was gruesome. I needed to throw a better answer at these guys on the flanks. Um, and honestly, they don't like cavalry charges. That's one good way to do a lot of damage to them. Obviously, peasant bows can do a lot of damage. But I also knew that if I brought peasant bows, I may have to defend against warhounds, against manticores, dragons, all the stuff that comes in. So peasant bows felt like a liability. And they don't cause a lot of damage against certain Chaos units anyway. And so I was like, you know what? Don't really want to bring the Peasant Bows. You know, I, I don't think that I really regret not bringing the Peasant Bows. But uh, obviously I think that the Cavalry for Bretonia, um, it's a good pick. But, I mean, when you think about it here, he had two um, he had two Exalted Heroes on the Manticore. If I would have brought Henry on his um, Hippogriff, and then just like a paladin on a Pegasus, they probably win that fight. And they're really good against other large targets afterwards, plus they got the mobility. So that probably would have been a solid pick, because if you think about it, all Chaos can really do to answer that is other air units. They don't have a great answer to that, because if Bretonia really wants to go Air Force, Chaos is going to lose that. Um, and Chaos really only has one skirmishing unit, which is their cavalry. And they're not bad against some of those flying units, but they're certainly not going to pick you up an instant kill or keep those units away forever. So probably should have gone with the flying units in this army as it would have given me a little more capability to fight off some of these units while the infantry may have been able to last longer on the ground. Obviously that would have repriced things and we would have had to see how it changed things up. But Henry is very good on his hippogriff as well. Just wanted to make you all aware of that. Hey, speaking of changes that came in, I want to show you something. So hang tight. All right, so this is a custom battle that I did with uh, Indy Pride right after we fought because we were curious to see how the Companion of Canel stack up against a Demigriff Knight. They are the same price. And Demigriff Knights are probably one of the best anti-cavalry units in the game. Um, they've, been, they've gone from like the absolute best to probably just still really top tier. There's obviously certain matchups they don't like. But uh, the Companion of Canel, I was they have very similar stats to Demigriff. A little bit lower charge, a little bit lower weapon damage, but they also have more unit models by almost double. So I have three standard questing knights, and then I have these Companions of Canel that we're watching right here, and I want you all to see this. This is a Demigriff Knight with Halberd, of course not supported with magic. Both of these factions have access to healing lore and all that kind of stuff. Just look at him melt this Demigriff. Just absolutely wreck it. Do not underestimate the anti-large and armor-piercing that these dudes do. That Companion of Canel just wasted that Demigriff Knight. Now, we were curious how, in just like a head-on charge scenario, the Questing Knights would trade. And if you think about it, it may look good on face value here. Like, I only paid 1100 for this unit of Questing Knights. And this Demigriff Knight was 1500 so that was a great trade, right? Uh, yeah, not really. And the reason why is because there's still 14 unit models left in this Demigriff Knight. Let's look at another one over here. This Demigriff Knight, 16 unit models. Over here, 16 unit models. Yeah, so it's not really a great trade, especially when you consider the fact that the Empire can heal. If you could put a peasant in between you and the Demigriff Knights, that's all of a sudden probably a, a feasible trade. And the, and the cost still easily justifies in that case if you can protect your questing knights with some peasants to avoid a charge, but I just wanted to get this so that you all could see a little bit of extra action here and kind of get an idea um, just how strong these new questing knights are here. Look at that, 18 demigriff kills, not a problem. Just mulched them. And you can imagine, like, if you got an advantageous charge or an advantageous healing situation, the beating would be even that much worse. But again, don't underestimate the fact that the Empire has a lot of the same tools, if not better tools, than Bretonia. Uh, but anyway, we were going to just let you all see this. I'm going to just throw in uh, these questing knights against his last few demigriffs. How many more demigriffs can they cut down, right? How many demigriffs does it take to finish these dudes? So we're going to throw this in. This is a leftover unit right there. I believe this was the unit that had 16. And 
they get shredded. They just get absolutely shredded. And it's going to take yet another unit of 15 Demigriff Knights here to come in and finish them off. And it's still a pretty respectable fight. Still a pretty respectable fight. So these uh, Companion of Canel are going to be an absolutely boss unit for Bretonnia. And, and Bretonnia already had some really boss cavalry in this game. And uh, this is good. I think it's kind of cool to see Bretonnia getting a cavalry unit that just owns so hard. It's kind of good for them. They got really crap infantry, and they've got some flimsy situations elsewhere. I think it's a neat ad for a faction that really relies on its cavalry. I don't know, you all tell me what you think. Boy, the Demigriff Knights really got handed their butt by that unit, though. 41 Demigriff unit models that it killed before finally being put down. I mean, that is just an incredible performance. Now, remember, there are 24 Demigriff Knights at this unit setting in each model, so... Yep, pretty impressive. So, Companions of Canal. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed the video tonight. Air of Carthage signing out. I will see you soon.